plans uh, for the next uh, several years, but I would expect also for the next decades because of the uh, climate neutrality goals that Europe is setting ourselves. And uh, uh, importantly is that um, a circular economy is really the centerpiece of European Green Deal. Why is that? That's is, that is so because half of total greenhouse gas emissions come from resource extraction and processing. So we know that you cannot uh, achieve climate neutrality target by 2050 without becoming fully circular. And uh, Circular Economy Action Plan announced uh, the second one that we have released in, in March announced the initiatives for the entire life cycle of products from design and manufacturing to consumption, repair, reuse, recycling, and also bringing the resources back into the economy. And uh, very important is that circular economy concept requires organizations to rethink their processes so that they move from linear model, which is the extract, produce, uh, consume and dispose model to a circle approach where all the resources are used, uh, where the waste is minimized, the value is kept in the loops in the system for as long as possible. And EMAS is really an effective tool to support this process. Now, aspects that are related to a circle economy can be easily integrated um, throughout the general implementation of EMAS. Uh, when, for example, conducting environmental review and assessing organizations' environmental impact and performance, or when setting environmental objectives, targets, and actions. Uh, the organizations which are registered with EMAS use key performance indicators in the environmental management systems, and EMAS environmental statements give them a thorough knowledge of their environmental impacts. The organizations which have implemented uh, management systems like EMAS, but EMAS in particular, to monitor the processes and constantly reduce environmental impact are already one step ahead of um, their way towards. And, uh, yeah, and EMAS registered organizations have the opportunity to be innovative leaders in their respective industries and push other companies to more sustainable and circular production processes. Um, and as importantly, organizations that are in this network of, of eco-management and audit scheme can also benefit from, from part of this, being part of this community in which uh, many others have already gained experience. So um, you can share that experience. And of course, they can also profit from the findings of a project like Enhance. And uh, speaking of small and medium-sized enterprises, um, we know that SMEs have a very central role in circular economy in, in Europe because they are backbone of European economy. They drive economic growth. They provide jobs uh, for a lot of people. Um, and uh, they are the agile ones. They are the ones who can change faster than the big ones. At the same time, collectively, when you, when you uh, take them together, they do uh, have a, an environmental impact and it can be pretty substantial. So it is really important to encourage SMEs uh, towards more sustainable practices. And EMA scheme provides for special provisions for SMEs to facilitate their participation. For example, full verification can be carried out every four years instead of three years. The time period for internal audit can be extended from one year to two. The environmental statement can be published every two years. The environmental verifiers uh, take into account the characteristics specific to small organizations so that they avoid unnecessarily administrative burden. And fees uh, are designed to be proportionate to the size of organization. So there is clearly a margin uh, to enhance participation of SMEs. And I understand that Enhance Project participants came up with some promising actions, as we've already heard now on regional level, like simplified registration procedures, enhanced benefits, reduced reporting requirements, and many other regulatory relief measures. And I would like to stress the last one, regulatory relief measures, because this is what many businesses are really looking forward to. Uh, if you are registered with EMAS, probably you are doing the right thing, and therefore you might forgo some audits uh, that uh, might be necessary for environmental impact assessment or other purposes, because normally if you implement EMAS, you already comply with really high standards and therefore you should be trusted as an entity 
like this, you should benefit from reduced uh, uh, regulatory burdens elsewhere. So this is something that we'd uh, appreciate to hear more about. Uh, the, my last message is to say that um, uh, we also appreciate a lot efforts by Catalan uh, government and by Catalan community altogether, because I think you are some of the best uh, in the class on EMAS, and you set a good example for the others. In fact, we show you quite often as a good, a good example to those who would like to scale up uh, the EMAS registration, which is still in low figures, would like to really um, increase it. And that's why um, uh, we really, really like what you do. Uh, we absolutely want you to share all those experiences and uh, be uh, a leader, an example uh, to many others. I unfortunately will have to uh, uh, switch off because of other engagements, but uh, my colleague, Frederic Detri, um, who is in charge of EMAS, uh, is staying with you and she'll be listening to what you have to say and if needed, of course, could probably also comment. So thank you very much for this and I wish you a nice exchange, nice discussion and all the best in the future. Thank you, Mr. Savaskas, for your speech. Um, and well, having placed EMAS in the context of the Green Deal, now Mr. Erwin Cybris from the uh, Interreg Europe uh, program uh, will provide us um, with a view on the state of play of the Interreg Europe program. Please, Mr. Cybris. Yes, uh, thank you, Maria, for this introduction. Um, so, a few introductory words. Um, uh, we are the sponsor, in a way, of this uh, successful project. Uh, as this is the final conference, the high-level uh, dissemination conference, uh, we are there to uh, monitor. Uh, and I'm here together with my colleagues, uh, Camille and Eilish, who uh, were accompanying you the last years in implementing uh, these projects. I will only be here for this uh, session here, uh, but my colleagues will follow the whole event and are also available if you have uh, questions. On the um, next slide, uh, you see a little bit the framework on uh, which we are working. We have within uh, four calls uh, submitted uh, all the funds available. 322 million euros, see the budget here. Uh, we were able to finance almost 260 projects from all over Europe. And you see here a little bit the composition, what is uh, 200, almost 260 projects mean. Uh, 2,000 partners from 30 countries, so the whole uh, European Union, uh, including uh, the UK, including Norway, including Switzerland, are participating. Um, a quarter of them are managing authorities, so organizations which are uh, directly in charge of structural funds. And we can say we have almost 90% of the NATS2 regions or NATS2 level, which means the European regions are involved. So 90%, almost all regions in Europe participate in one or the other way in uh, one of uh, our projects, either as a lead partner or as a uh, partner within within the project. So I think this is already uh, uh, quite a success. Uh, we uniting Europe in bringing the regions together, allowing them to share their uh, good uh, policies and uh, to transfer their in their regions. On the next slide, you see uh, a few uh, further uh, figures what uh, so far we have already uh, can report on um, achievements. We have almost uh, 3,000 good practices identified within uh, the 260 uh, projects. Uh, about 12,000 uh, staff members have already reported increased capacity, meaning knowledge of what is going on in the other regions, being aware of good practices in other regions in Europe. And we have uh, more than 850 action plans already uh, approved, are uh, in place and are being implemented or are already uh, implemented. You see below this uh, figures that um, the target values are almost reached, even though we have only uh, a half of the projects that have uh, finished the phase one and already now we have um, almost all the targets 
we have promised to the European Commission, to the partner states already achieved. So the program is also from that point of view uh, quite a success. On the next slide, a little bit a more comprehensive, uh, trying to bring the result of uh, Interreg Europe to one figure is uh, this slide. Uh, we have um, 400, more than 400 policy changes already reported from your sites. Uh, this is the purpose of the of Interreg Europe that we promote the policy changes, the uh, improvement of policies in the regions. Uh, 400 policy changes from half of the projects are already uh, reported and validated by us. And uh, if we translate this into figures, money, meaning and this uh, also always, always an important uh, figure to evaluate the success of uh, a program. We have uh, 161 million euro invested in this 126 projects. And this investment of 160 million euro triggered uh, investments of more than 600 million euros on the ground in the region. So we have a leverage effect of about four. And I think again, another uh, success figure, how important um, uh, the program is. One euro invested in Interreg Europe triggers about four euros on investment on the ground four euros in smart investment, in good investment, in uh, policies which work, which uh, are shown that they work in other regions. So this is um, a little bit the, the, the framework of the program concerning the projects. We have uh, on the next slide uh, also the framework for our second pillar of uh, policy learning we offer the regions, the policy learning platform. We have here uh, about 18,000 uh, members of the policy learning platform who are contributing but also uh, profiting from the results of the policy learning platform. Uh, we have in this uh, policy learning platform now um, about 1,800 good practices uh, which are validated, which I mean the, the projects reported to us. Uh, the Secretariat, but also the thematic experts of the policy learning platform have looked into it and validated and uh, uh, stamped them in a way saying, yes, these are uh, good practices which are useful for all over Europe and uh, can be transferred for all uh, regions in Europe. So these are uh, good practices which are interesting for uh, anyone who is interested uh, to learn and to implement uh, good policy in their region or in the municipality. Then uh, we provide uh, expert uh, policy support and I uh, would underline here a little bit our uh, tool peer reviews. And we have uh, um, as of uh, mid of September, uh, already 15 peer reviews done, uh, seven are um, to be done in the near future. And I'll just give you a few examples of recent peer reviews, uh, what we have um, offered and uh, undertaken, just a few uh, words on a peer review. A peer review is um, a kind of um, mini, mini project. A region in Europe asked for support. They have a certain problem, like in a project, and um, they need a quick fix, uh, a quick of change with other regions in Europe, how to fix the problem, to exchange with them, how did you do, what problems did you face and how did you find solutions. So uh, this request is then uh, forwarded to the policy learning platform. The team of the policy learning platform, together with the thematic experts, are looking around in Europe within our projects and beyond of uh, other regions in Europe who have solutions, who have the experience, who can share something. And then um, four, five, six, sometimes seven uh, experts from all over Europe coming together, uh, sitting in two days intensive meeting to share with uh, the region who needs the help. Uh, the region explains what is the problem, what have they done. The other region uh, listen, the other region explain their experience, which could be uh, a solution. And then uh, there is an extensive exchange discussion among each other to fix 
uh, a tailor-made uh, action plan for the region to uh, improve a policy to find a solution. So we had in the last, uh, uh, in, in this month, um, already uh, a few uh, peer reviews, one in uh, Norway for sector prioritization and entrepreneurial discovery process. So this is on the economic side, but we have also a uh, couple of peer reviews concerning uh, environmental issues, so circular economy and waste management uh, was done for Polish region. Uh, this was uh, just uh, finishing yesterday. Then uh, we have in the pipeline end of September framing the urban logistics strategy uh, for uh, Warsaw city in Poland. And then uh, mid of October sustainable waste management. Uh, this is also for, uh, um, this is for Slovakia region. And then uh, another uh, peer review is fixed for end of October, energy efficiency uh, skilled SME uh, programs for the Western Macedonia region in uh, Greece. So you see a few examples what uh, the policy learning platform is doing and in a way is offering the service uh, also for you if you want to continue, if you have in your region other issues which you would like to tackle. The policy platform is there and uh, is uh, providing the services beyond uh, the project lifetime and beyond um, the time where we can submit a uh, project. So uh, have a look at the policy learning platform, make use of the services. On the next slide, um, a few information on what the program provides uh, to help the regions to overcome uh, COVID-19 crisis. We have a dedicated website. You see it here, you click on it um, when you have the um, the slides, you see also the full uh, email web address on the top of the uh, slide. You see we share uh, good practices, uh, online thematic activities are offered, um, policy support from the policy learning platform uh, is provided and also news and events uh, related to the COVID-19 crisis and recovery uh, process. On the next slide, a few, a few more uh, information on uh, the uh, project. Enhance is uh, one of the 31 projects in the uh, thematic ob objective resource efficiency, uh, like a circular economy, industrial symbiosis, uh, waste, water, and uh, procurement. Uh, but Enhance is um, one of only two projects which address environmental performance management. Uh, besides Enhance, it's also your who is uh, working on uh, this specific topic, environment performance management. And um, the only project who is uh, dealing with eco-management and audit scheme, EMAS, is actually Enhance. And uh, thanks to the enhanced projects, we have uh, also in, in this area now uh, a project, uh, kind of uh, a pillar, and uh, as confirmed by uh, the Commission, European Commission, uh, one of the best uh, regions in Europe, GASAT, in this uh, project to provide their knowledge to all regions uh, in Europe in a way via the policy learning platform. So thank you also for this. I also want to thank you, and this is the next slide then, um, how the uh, Enhanced Project supported uh, the other program activities. And you see here a few uh, pictures, um, and I can only underline that the project was very active in the program capitalization and the uh, communication uh, activities, just to mention uh, the thematic workshop, circular economy, um, and the necessity to transformative opportunity for cities and regions in Europe. This took place uh, end of June in uh, Brussels. Then uh, a joint event on energy and resource efficiency. This was an event uh, organized by the policy learning platform uh, and uh, in uh, mid of October last year in Sevilla. And um, then we had uh, 11 of your good practices, which you uh, forwarded to 
uh, as for the uh, validation uh, are uh, in a way approved and are now available on the good practice uh, database of the policy learning platform. So you see uh, your project is uh, providing uh, quite a good number of uh, practices which are important uh, for all over Europe. On the next uh, slide, and uh, I can probably be short because uh, the speakers after me will uh, focus on this. Uh, we are happy that uh, you can uh, report four policy changes in uh, three regions. You see them here uh, uh, outlined in the Catalonia uh, region uh, budget uh, adjustment. In uh, uh, Tallinn, uh, you see um, changes in the Waste Act and the uh, energy sector organization. And then uh, Austria uh, reports also uh, a changement and improvement in the Industrial Indus Industry Act. So congratulations uh, for this and for these achievements. Let me uh, have on the next slide a few words about uh, the future. Um, you may all be aware that uh, Interreg Europe has not been in the draft regulation uh, in May 2018 uh, when it was published. Uh, but thanks to the support, first of all, by the region, uh, you, the project partners, then the Council, but also the European Parliament, uh, we managed that the program is back in the regulation and is now also uh, confirmed in the draft uh, regulation. Uh, meetings taking place now uh, almost weekly to uh, implement the decision of the Council. A budget is uh, not yet provided for the program, but uh, we have in a kind of negotiation box 500 million euro for all uh, four interregional cooperation programs, and these are besides us, uh, Interact, Espen, and Urbect. So we share this budget, which is uh, a little bit less than in the uh, current period, but taking into account that UK is not anymore part of the union, it's quite a substantial uh, budget uh, we, uh, we have for the four programs. Uh, and we expect soon that this 500 million euro for the four programs will be uh, then uh, divided uh, into the uh, programs and then we will hopefully soon know what is the detailed budget for Interreg Europe for the coming uh, programming period. The uh, partner states of the program, uh, which are now 29, uh, the European Union uh, member states plus Norway and uh, Switzerland, Norway uh, indicated uh, their uh, willingness to contribute. We are waiting uh, a written uh, confirmation, but uh, from Switzerland we have this already, but uh, we are quite positive that Norway uh, will continue in this program as it is in the, uh, in the current period. Um, in the next slides, a few uh, figures I can also, a uh, few issues I can also tell you already what is under discussion. If you change the light, perfect. Um, the main features will remain. The partner states are, as I said, uh, preparing the program. What is already clear, we will be uh, again pan European. We will have the similar uh, objective, uh, improve regional development policies, uh, capacity building for policymakers in the region. This is the core uh, target group as in the current uh, program. And we also uh, most likely will have the same uh, tools. On the one hand, we will have the projects, but also the policy learning platform will continue um, in the future program. Uh, this is also uh, a clear uh, wish of the partner states. We have a few um, changes uh, to be discussed and uh, they still have to be uh, confirmed by the partner states. Uh, the focus on structural funds will be uh, lightened. Uh, we will not anymore require 50% of all partners work in structural funds. However, there will be still a certain link uh, to structural funds, but uh, less strict than in the current period. This 
uh, is uh, a help for the more developed regions who do not have so big structural funds programs than the uh, less developed regions. Uh, a request from their side, so we, uh, in a way, this was something which the partner states seem to uh, be open for. Then uh, we allow already pilot actions in the uh, earlier, much earlier as we do before. This is another proposal to be discussed and uh, requested by a number of partner states. And uh, what is another enlightenment? Uh, we do not have any more a thematic a clear thematic focus as we did in the current period for the four thematic areas, as you know, but we will have an interact specific objective uh, dealing on capacity building for uh, regions in Europe. So this is because this is the core of the program and here uh, within this uh, focus on the thematic focus capacity building, priority within this priority of the program, uh, the member states will then uh, decide depending on the number of applications coming in, the quality of the applications coming in, uh, which projects will be approved. So the thematic uh, scope of the program will be much wider. So this is uh, one thing still the partner states would like to have a certain um, focus on thematic areas, uh, this to be decided, but it will not be as fixed in the uh, program as it had been in the uh, current program. So this uh, a few outline uh, for the future and I think I uh, should stop here. I would like to thank all the partners, uh, especially the lead partners for leading this successful uh, project. Uh, my uh, colleagues Camille and Eilis will uh, follow uh, the presentation. I would also like my colleagues uh, Camille and Eilis for their uh, support of the project. And I wish you um, for the last mile, which means uh, a couple of uh, few weeks for your project, for your finalization, all the best. Thank you very much. All the best for this conference. Thank you, Mr. Salvarez, for the interesting presentation. We have uh, among the participants many public administrations, so I think they will get benefits from all this information and um, probably will be future applicants on the Interreg Europe program. And uh, our next speaker is Ms. Maria Jose Sarrias, head of the Service of Environmental Qualification of the Ministry of Territory and Sustainability of the Government of Catalonia. She will provide us a brief recap of the project. It's it's okay the presentation now? Yes? You yes. can see? Okay. Yep. Yes, yes, yes. I, I, okay. Okay. Good afternoon everyone. Uh, I'm going to the project EMAS is uh, EMAS as an S to help and nurture the circular economy is a uh, has been developed within the framework of the Interreg European program. Uh, sorry. So the countries involved in the sorry <laughs> anterior. The countries involved in the project are five countries: Spain, Italy, Austria, Czech Republic, and Estonia. The project partners are the Stockholm Environment Institute from Tallinn Center, the Czech Environmental Information Agency, the Environment Agency from Austria the Santa Ana School from Italy, the Catalan government from, from Spain, and the regional government from Andalusia, Spain. The objective of the project is to improve the implementation of regional policy instruments oriented to increasing the efficiency of resources by the exchange of experiences and practices on supporting EMAS registration. Enhance promotes EMAS as a driving force to facilitate the transition from the current linear production model to a circular economic model. Each partner of the project has been working to improve his, his uh, policy instrument. Here you can see the policy instrument from the partners. For example, Catalonia the, is improving competitiveness of SMS based on the most efficient use of resources promote the circular economy and advice to the company in green economy.
from Andalusia is enhancing the competitiveness of SMEs through promotion and development of EMAS as a key element for improving their environmental performance for the sustainability of the production system and for the generating green jobs. Italy is spread the application of GPP among public bodies of Liguria through the introduction of environmental criteria in the services and products purchasing procedures. Estonia the, is contributing to economic growth, increasing the competitiveness of enterprises applying resource efficiency technologies and eco-innovation, taking into account EMAS as a key environmental management tool. Czech Republic, the National Programme for Implementation of Eco-Management and Audit Scheme, update and revision of main objects, including redefinition of main issues, roles and financial support programs. And finally, Austria supports SMS capability to grow in regional, national and international markets and to be engaged in innovation processes, implementing EMAS as a strategic choice for organizations wishing to reach growth and innovation. The first two years of the project have been very intensive in terms of meetings with the stakeholders to define the actions plans. Some of the stakeholders have also had an important role along the second phase, that is the implementation of the action plan. How we got to our action plans? In this slide, we can see first at all identification of good practices, involvement of stakeholders. We, we did a lot of workshops and working sessions with partners and stakeholders. Detection of other good practices along the project and, data and debate on those already, already existing. And finally, the good practice database and the elaboration of our action plan. The EMAS action plan, we have four kinds of actions. After my, the, the, my, my presentation, we will see in detail, but the four, uh, four uh, actions are economic actions, actions to reduce and simplify the administrative procedure, actions for the promotion of EMAS, and actions in the field of green public procurement. Here, in this slide, we can, we can see the distribution of the type of actions, and as we can see, the more percentage, percentage of are of regulatory relief and for actions in the field of green public procurement. And what are the lessons learned? Our stakeholders are our best allies. Communicating a regulatory relief or incentive for companies is as important as creating it. We learn from both success and failures. To build trust, to, you have to generate knowledge and working at the local level with a look at Europe. And thus, for 2021, there's a great opportunity to provide EMAS with a renewed impetus in the following years. Uh, thank you very much for your attention. And here do you have the 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 address from our our site in the from the project and also the our Twitter. Uh, thank you very much and that's all. Thank, thank you Maria Jose for your presentation and now we go more specifically into the results of the enhanced project and we will start with Mr. Josep Maria Masip, uh, head of the section of the qualification system of the Ministry of Territory and Sustainability of the Government of Catalonia. Hello, good afternoon to everyone. Um, you see my, my screen? It's, see? Yeah, it's okay? Okay, perfect, thank you. Thank you, Maria. Um, I, I would like to be very short because all the information you, you, you could find this information in the website. In the future, you have all, all the details of the every, every action. So let's start with, with the, um, the plan action action plan of Catalonia. For us, the, the key points um, after more than three years, three years and a half um, working about this, 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 um, this program, this project, uh, which are the, the best, the key points to, to implement uh, these actions 
has been the the discussion discussion with stakeholders with the stakeholders are, are the um, is, are the key actors of the of the, the project so we thank you to work with them we we we, we have a, a lot of uh, good experience with working with them also we have to to give to the image organization attractive incentive if not is not uh, uh, necessary to work uh, um, all the actions are very are viable. The key, one element that is key is to have complicity with the K body to implement actions. For example, for instance, um, we have to work with, with inspectors, for example, to, to the, uh, if we want to, to implement an action of a regulatory review, uh, regular, uh, relief uh, inspections, we have to to stay uh, to work with with inspectors so we uh, have to show them what is emas to explain them they have to understand what is what is emas and they they must trust in this tool uh, next slide is uh, is the the action plan of catalonia is a, a summary of the our action plan um, the first one, it's uh, the um, the first action is the reduction of uh, financial guarantees for waste treatment acti activities. Uh, the reference of this uh, this action has been Italy. Also, we have another another uh, action that is the to give special conditions for image organization uh, participating to pro to funding programs. Also, it, our reference is Italy. Next uh, action is uh, promotion of PIMAS through public procurement. I will take you some uh, information about this this uh, action. Another one is the reduction and simplification, simplification of inspections in EMAS organizations. I, I have to say that uh, when we work it with in the, in the first uh, meetings with stakeholders, um, the uh, Emma's organizations uh, voted this point that is very important for them. So, if uh, they, the uh, Emma's organization uh, are working with a lot of uh, regulations, they have to have have to implement some procedures, have to pass some some audits. So there are too many synergies between uh, a management system and and. and and um, the and the inspection and inspection. So we have to to, to give them some uh, benefits. Finally, our last action is the tax relations for EMAS organizations. Okay, Maria. I, so one minute left. One minute. So um, the reduction action one um, is the is uh, only this this. Uh, Action is for only for for the the waste sector. Twenty five percent of uh, total uh, the the ten percent of the register are the, of the waste sector. So it's a good a good uh, idea to give them a reduction of their financial guarantee. Action two. Um, we have to give extra points in some programs uh, related to several uh, issues like uh, circular economy, waste. So uh, EMAS uh, organizations have extra points to, uh, to, to give to them. And in, in these programs, I show in, in the screen, the 5% of the application awards uh, has been for EMAS organization. Action three is one of the most important but is still we are still working with uh, public procurement. Other partners, Austria and Italy, are working with this uh, this action. So I I don't say anymore. Um, I, action four is for us is the the, the the one of the main the most important action is to work with I think the the, the minutes to to direction of simplification simplification of inspections we are working with the catalan waste agency we are trying to reduce the inspection of the inspectors it's good to study uh, why uh, the image organization has less legal breaches it's, it's a conclusion of this study so we we can give them some some benefits and also we another line we have been working on is um, 
to uh, the, after the extension of the inspection frequency. So image organization hand has benefits on in this in this way. And also is a finish, Maria. Yes. Uh, also, uh, fi to finish is um, have to find synergies between um, the validated uh, statement and and uh, and the process of uh, inspection. The last one is tax reduction, but uh, you will find all the information in our website. So thank you very much. Thank you, Jose Maria. Sorry for interrupting you, but otherwise we don't have time for the debate at the end. Okay. Now we will continue with Ms. Immaculada Tola from the Planning Office of the General Director of Environmental Quality and Climate Change of the Regional Government of Andalusia. Please, Immaculada. Hello, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, is it the presentation uh, okay? Okay. So, um, first of all, I would like to thank you so much for your time to be here. Okay, uh, with this presentation, we will show you uh, the state of uh, the implementation of the action plan in Andalusia and its main results, and uh, what the impact and influence of them on the Andalusian policy instrument is. I will try to, to be uh, as brief as possible because you will have available all the, the info and the presentation in the website of the project, as, as my colleague uh, had said. Uh, what about the state of implementation of uh, our action plan? Here you can see the five actions uh, in the in our plan. Action one is uh, regarding the search and launching of financial support for EMAS promotion amongst uh, SMEs in Andalusia. Action two is the regarding the dissemination and promotion of the guideline for the EMAS implementation in health sector. And uh, uh, action three is regarding it's one of the most important for us uh, regarding the development of a pr prospective study for the launching of an emas club in andalusia action four is regarding the development of proposal for emas public recognition emas promotion I mean. and uh, the last one is uh, regarding the dissemination and visibility uh, activities for the emas register in andalusia as you can see, two of them, number five and four, have been successfully achieved in uh, 2019 and 2020 this year. The action number three is still in progress, and the actions number one and two uh, have been affected by the by the um, COVID-19. Uh, in the case of the action one, it will be probably achieved by the end of this year. And uh, the problem is uh, regarding the action too, because it's totally paralyzed because the health sector for us has been, as you can imagine, the most affected by the, the COVID-19. So, uh, the results of Andalusian EMAS action plan, um, I'm going to, to focus only in the, because uh, a reason of, of time available, um, focus in the uh, adopted action during uh, last year and, and, and 2020 uh, because the respective results for the action number one are, um, and two will be available okay in my presentation so let me pass through this and also through this action number three uh, as i said before uh, it's regard to the development of the proper prospective study for the launching of uh, emas um, club in Andalusia. This action is uh, still in progress, but uh, almost the, um, I will say the 80% um, of the results have been already achieved. So uh, we are now uh, working very hard uh, to, con uh, con to uh, finish the, um, the final study, okay, for this um, EMAS uh, club. And uh, it will be ready by the by the end of this this year. Uh, meanwhile, in the framework of uh, one of our meeting with uh, our stakeholders, uh, one of them proposed the signature of an Andalusian Pact on EMAS in order to boost and drive forward the creation of this EMAS club in Andalusia, as you can see in the slide. What about the action four? Uh, regarding the proposal for EMAS public recognition. Uh, uh, we think that uh, it's, uh, it's one of the key points 
for, uh, in our action plan because EMAS uh, has to be more than a logo. Uh, EMAS uh, has to be a, a brand. Okay, uh, for us this action um, um, has uh, two um, two sides. I mean, uh, one of them the inclusion of uh, EMAS in the last call for the environmental environment sorry awards in Andalusia where EMAS was included as an evaluation criteria for all the categories. It was a, a very, very high um, successful um, action. And also, uh, for, um, this action is regarding the mention of EMAS in all the agenda of public events through several speeches of our seniors official, okay, to, in order to, to, to boost EMAS as a, as a brand. As I said before, regarding the the last action, action number five, um, one one part of, of it uh, was the um, the develop of a um, marketing campaign. I mean, uh, with the hashtag con Emas todos ganamos. It was uh, finished last year, uh, 2019, with uh, four videos, two infographics, three gifs for social media, one roll-up, one brochure, brochure, sorry, uh, etc. And uh, all of this uh, material is still available on our website. Uh, in the other hand, um, we um, we achieved several appearances in the in the social media. I mean, Twitter, the publication in the EU help desk website, and several press releases uh, in our in our community in our region. And um, what about the impact and influence of, uh, on the Andalusian policy instrument? Uh, we have tried to summarize in this slide what are the, the connections for, for this. Um, and uh, I'm, I'm sorry because we don't have uh, enough time to explain all the indicators for each of one um, action. So in general, in an in a overview vision, I mean, uh, how all action for EMAS promotional incentive have influence on our policy instrument? Well, pues, um, particularly on enhancing the competitiveness of the SMEs. So, as, as you can see, we um, we have the uh, as Andalusian policy instrument, the um, the operative program program. Uh, with uh, concludes uh, this year, and uh, the impact of the influence is monitored through the following performance indicator: a uh, number of companies that receive non-financial grant for their registration registration sorry in in IMAS, as you can see in the slide. So uh, I think it's enough because the reason of, of time available. Thank you so so much for your attendance. And uh, if you have any any question, be, please feel free to contact us. Uh, here you can see the the address and also in the website of the project. Thank thank you so much, Maria. And, and, uh, thank you. Thank you, Maculada. And now from Spain, we will now travel to Italy. We have uh, Mr. Tiberio Daddi. Assistant Professor of the Santana School of Advanced Studies. Okay, I try to go share my screen. Uh, probably now it works. Can you confirm, Maria, please? Yep, it works. Okay, uh, good morning to everyone. Also, I, I would say good afternoon to everyone uh, is better uh, from my side. Uh, I will present you the uh, work uh, done in Italy and sp specifically in the Guria region, region as anticipated by the other partners before. Before to start, I would like to thank to all partners. It's very a pity to be at the end of our project and thank you again for the interesting activity carried out in, in enhance during these three years. So first issue, two words regarding geographical and policy scope. So as, as we know, Interreg is a program focused on policymaker, focused on environmental policy. So why and how 
uh, university can contribute in this kind of activity, in this kind of project. So since the beginning, during the submission of the project, we declare that our main target was uh, an, a regional legislation of uh, Liguria region, the law that you can see here published in 2007, and aim to manage tenders, contract, and concession. So in somehow, uh, we did a sort of agreement with the regional government of Liguria to work together in order to achieve the goal of the project, in specific, the modification and the positive influence in the policy instruments, in, in our case, in the field of green uh, public procurement. Why green public, public procurement has been selected by us and by the regional government of Liguria? For mainly three reasons. The first reason, uh, Italy is considered by some studies as one of the leading countries in green public procurement. Uh, why is considered so? Because it's one of the few cases where uh, green public procurement uh, is uh, mandatory. So uh, green public procurement for public authorities in Italy is not only an opportunity, but is also a legal requirement. So uh, they have to follow uh, the rules published uh, in the decree uh, that uh, have been published on, on this topic by the Ministry. Second, uh, Liguria region is very committed to green public procurement. Since uh, before that the green public procurement is made mandatory in Italy, they work very a lot and we have collaborated with them also in the past uh, in this field or in other field on environmental policy. So we have found immediately uh, an agreement, let's say so, to focus and enhance activities on this topic and the fact that uh, this topic can constitute a leverage for both EMAS as a, a, a way to spread the, the number of EMAS in the region, but also yeah, circular economy, adopting a circular green public procurement approach. And this is, this is the third reason. Okay, Liguria region is very committed to our the green public procurement, but the performance in the frame of the numbers of EMAS registered com company in the, in the region see Liguria as one of the last uh, region. Uh, if compared to Lombardia or Emilia Romagna, is uh, quite in, in the last position. So uh, the idea was, okay, let's focus on green public procurement uh, as a way to try to spread and to leverage the number of EMAS in the region. What we did before the planning of our action, we start with a sort of uh, needs identification. So uh, we wanted to be uh, very focused on the real needs in terms of green public procurement uh, uh, in the region. So we start uh, some interview with the uh, key uh, bodies in the field of, uh, of, the, of the green public procurement. So we interview face to face, fortunately before the lockdown, the central station of the regional level, the province level, the municipality of Genova, so the biggest metropolitan area in uh, Liguria, and then also small municipalities, take into account, uh, as you have seen in the previous slide, uh, Liguria region has something like uh, more than uh, 300 of municipalities, because they and, they and they are also very small, and so probably uh, the level of knowledge regarding the use of green public procurement uh, uh, was not so spread in this kind of context. In fact, uh, the results uh, uh, of, of our needs identification, as we call, uh, show that, uh, especially in small municipalities, uh, they don't know the difference or the, the, the difference between uh, process certification or the difference between process uh, and product certification. So, or they don't they don't know how to use EMAS in a tender in a green tender. So, if I should use it uh, to select the candidate to to give uh, an awarding system or to include EMAS as uh, in the technical rules. Or another issue uh, that has been raised by the interview is that uh, they don't know how to check the validity of the environmental certification. Because as you can understand, you receive the certificate when a candidate present the application in a tender, but then the tender can last three or four years. Let's, let's think to cleaning services of regional building. And so how then after during these four years, they should monitor the environmental certification validity. So a sort and a list of needs. This list of needs help us to plan uh, five uh, different actions. 
the four the first four was related to uh, green public procurement uh, and the last one was on the inspection frequency as already mentioned by jo joseph i will not uh, uh, focus on this action but uh, let's see briefly the first four so the first two action was aim to support liguria region in the development of uh, policy instruments in the field of gpp and uh, valorizing emas in these uh, in these uh, policy instruments what we did in practice uh, we support them in the monitoring action of the green public procurement action plan we support in the planning of the next uh, regional action plan or we identify some specific uh, action in order to improve uh, the uh, subsequent uh, legislation that followed the at the policy instrument in 2007 and this activity has been in somehow recognized in the policy instrument of the region here we have an example this is a deliberation of the regional government of april 2020 as you can see interreg europe announced and the activity of the project has been recognized officially in a public uh, let's say legislative act uh, as uh, uh, one of the mean to improve and to in this case uh, uh, monitor the the action regarding green public procurement uh, in the past three years and as you can understand uh, for us uh, as a public university let's say but we are not a policy makers policy maker as i was saying uh, in the opening of the speech uh, is a uh, a uh, good uh, uh, achievement to demonstrate how uh, working together with public authorities we can also contribute on the modification of uh, uh, policy instruments. The th our action third and fourth is uh, strictly connected with the needs and with the barriers and difficulties highlighted in the interviews. So together with the regional government officer, we decide to draft uh, guidelines on the use of EMAS in green public procurement and then these guidelines has been also applied in some pilot action so has been uh, illustrated uh, to for training of public officer not only public officer but also companies in order to increase their awareness of the opportunity of emas as a mean to win a uh, green tender uh, in the coming and the next uh, in, in the future we have done communication awareness raising campaigns and we have we have worked uh, operationally on some tenders, for example, in the, in the specific on tender on cleaning service, services of some public authorities in order to illustrate how to apply in an operational and practical way the suggestion that we include in the guidelines. Thank you. Thank you, Fabio. And now, uh, thank you, Tiberio. And now, uh, our next speaker is Mr. Harry Morrell, the Program Director of the Environmental Management Program of the Tallinn Centre of the Stockholm Environment Institute. Thank you, Maria. Uh, I, would, I will present very briefly only a few of our more successful uh, actions that we have already implemented. Uh, and as we have heard from previous presenters, it's quite clear that the actions or measures should be very concrete and should motivate uh, companies really directly through, uh, through some sort of financial uh, incentive. And this was also what we recognized. And that's why I would like to focus on two uh, measures that in a way also directly contribute to our policy instrument uh, with a specific objective, which is the uh, improvement or increase of resource and energy efficiency of enterprises here in Estonia. Altogether, we prepared uh, six um, measures, and as you can see, quite many of them, they overlap with the similar measures or policy instruments that were also planned in the Catalanian and uh, other regions. So let's then focus on those two success measures. Uh, as I said, we have already implemented, and we have gained a very clear positive impact uh, after implementing those measures. The first action which we implemented was related to relief on energy audit requirement. Uh, in a way, all large MS registered companies here in Estonia have today now exempt from uh, mandatory energy audits according to the EU Energy Efficiency Directive. 
And um, we also, together with uh, related uh, authorities, especially the Ministry of Environment, the Ministry of Economy, prepared very clear guidelines also. So it is definitely a measure which has uh, received positive feedback from uh, quite a number of companies. And we can also see that it is definitely an additional incentive for enterprises to go for EMAS registration. And it, it, in, it includes also financial uh, as well as resource related incentive because it's quite difficult and quite time consuming plus also expensive to uh, um, to carry out this energy audit here in Estonia. And then the second uh, action that we have already implemented which has had very positive impact in terms of EMAS implementation and also I would say uh, some uh, kind of recognition uh, of integration of EMAS and uh, sustainable waste management, or let's say circular economy. So uh, at the end of last year or beginning of the year 2020, the Waste Act was amended and uh, this gives now a very clear exempt from EMAS registered companies to EMAS registered companies from a new warranty or financial guarantee, which is related to waste depositing. And it's really, clear and uh, huge incentive for waste management related companies, not only waste management, but also other companies who tend to uh, storage waste, especially when it comes to uh, energy sector or mining. So the number of companies which have now started to implement EMAS is quite big. So I would say soon uh, most of the waste management sector is covered by EMAS, which is very, very positive. And I would say it also plays impact uh, or provides impact to overall uh, implementation of resource efficiency and the resource uh, or circular economy impact. So all in all, what we can say is that this EMAS uh, project together with those planned and already realized uh, action plans have uh, resulted in a kind of new EMAS renaissance here in Estonia. So we can see that the number of EMAS registrations will increase next year two to three times. So I see that uh, Enhance has had a very positive impact. And here I would like to thank you all of the partners, first of all, with whom we had very good and uh, fruitful cooperation. And I would like to thank also all authorities here in Estonia who contributed into that. So this is shortly all from my side. Thank you, Harim. Thank you also for being so quick. <laughs> and now from Estonia, we will move to Czech Republic with um, Ms. Jana Sajdakova, Environmental Labeling Specialist from the Czech Environmental Information Agency. Uh, thank you, Maria, for the floor. And also thank you all for your time to uh, attend this event. Uh, I will also be very brief and just second to upload the presentation. Oh, yes. Uh, so we also uh, have chosen uh, one uh, one action, uh, which is, uh, I think, very successful, uh, despite all the difficulties with the uh, Corona crisis. Uh, this action is uh, the environmental awareness of the public authorities. Uh, we are working together with uh, ministry and with the NGO. And uh, we feel uh, that this topic is still very uh, underestimated and uh, practice shows us that uh, is, this action is very needed uh, because uh, well-educated uh, policy officers, uh, they are giving us the right example uh, to the public and uh, uh, we think that the public organization uh, sh should apply the basis principles of uh, uh, the environmental management system, if not EMAS uh, directly. Uh, and it is also um, uh, better implementation of the green principles to the public procurement. Mm. Uh, as, uh, 
So uh, we uh, did cooperate with the Ministry of the Environment and uh, with our NGO uh, called Coniclets, uh, and we uh, developed a big textbook, uh, which uh, which is very uh, big and. Uh, uh, it is very. Uh, it is divided uh, to uh, human activities, the influence of the human activities. Uh, uh, it's uh, explaining the status of individual components of the environment, and also uh, responding uh, what, how the people should react uh, to uh, protect the environment. Mm -hmm. Uh, with this uh, textbook, uh, we also plan, uh, this is not uh, finalized yet, uh, mm, uh, there should be developed the leaflets uh, with uh, certain topics uh, to be very, uh, uh, to highlight the most important topics and uh, to have uh, some statistics in and also uh, the leaflets uh, should contain the tips to the methodology to the green public procurement. So it also should contain the uh, instructions or uh, uh, quick tips how to implement uh, this topic to the uh, procurements. Uh, so uh, the target groups uh, is the mostly the public officers. Uh, we are planning to the future series of uh, trainings and uh, uh, we'll see how the situation will develop. Uh, so maybe it will be more uh, of the distance trainings. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I want to go back here. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we want to uh, organize the, the webinars and supporting videos uh, to be published and uh, to uh, touch uh, much more people than maybe uh, in personal. So uh, this is our plan. So thank you, Maria, for the word and I have finished. Thank you, Jana. And last but not least, we have Ms. Monica Brown, uh, Deputy Head of Unit of the Environment Agency Austria. Monica? Hello, Monica? Yes, I'm oh. here. Yep. I'm trying to share my presentation. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Thank you. Um, I will start the presentation from the beginning. Okay, so I will present the five actions we have implemented in Austria. The first action was um, regarding green public procurement. So we had a stakeholder workshop in November 2018, where we discussed possibilities to include EMAs in the tendering processes. And then we defined uh, recommendations for the technical specifications and awarding criteria and added it to the Austrian action plan for green public procurement. Um, due to the COVID crisis, it, uh, we had a, a short um, delay, 
But now the action plan is currently under revision and will be published at the end of September. So we are looking forward to have uh, more technical uh, technical specifications and awarding criteria uh, criteria um, for EMAS now in in the Austrian Action Plan for public procurement for green public procurement. Um, the next slide shows uh, our second action. We um, we had um, we. Annalise and me, we are lecturers at university, and therefore we have uh, good relationships to students. And action two was about um, master thesis um, concerning environmental impact assessment and EMAS. This was an um, action that we took over from Italy. Uh, so our reference was Italy. Um, and we proved how we could apply the Italian measures. After, um, as a one result of this, this master thesis was that a full application is not really possible in Austria because the costs that have been reduced in Italy, they do not exist in Austria. Um, and also the Austrian threshold values are already considered to be uh, high in comparison to other member states and therefore Austrian has been criticized by the EU Commission uh, so far, uh, already and that's why this is not a measure we could uh, really take over. Um, but another thing is that we could uh, more consider um, the EMAS documentation within the whole process of the environmental impact assessment um, for example, we could consider the environmental statement and also the audit report, um, preferably in the case of a plant adaption, uh, because we have also, of course, impact assessments for plant adaptions. Yeah, and um, another, the last result was uh, the EMA statement could also replace the, the climate and energy concept, which has to be provided by the operator uh, in case of an environmental impact assessment. So these were the results concerning the environmental impact assessment and the consideration of EMAS. Um, the next slide shows the energy audit. Um, this is a, real, a similar measure uh, to, to Estonia. So we also tried to integrate EMAS into the in our national energy efficiency law. Uh, the first measure was to have a gap analysis. Um, yeah, we um, we, we took a, a look at the Annex Six of the Energy Efficiency Directive and um, looked up what are the requirements for the energy audit and compared it to, to EMAS and the environmental statement. And then we also made a survey, an informal survey, um, on the current implementation of the en energy efficiency law um, in EMAS companies. And EMAS companies, of course, would like to have more um, yeah, positive effects of EMAS uh, in this energy efficiency scheme. And um, that's why EMAS companies emailed uh, the responsible bodies with improvement requests. And then we had, we as experts had um, a discussion with the experts from the responsible bodies regarding the future of the Austrian Energy Efficiency Act. And now, yes, a new legislative uh, uh, proposal, a new legal proposal is ready but not yet under assessment. So we are not so far as Estonia, but we hope that we have a new um, energy efficiency law soon and that the internal audit is not um, necessary anymore for EMAS organizations. Yeah, and the um, fourth action was training of public authorities. Um, we made a leaflet for authorities, an EMAS leaflet. I think the most important thing in this, uh, within this measure is to inform public, uh, public authorities. Um, yeah, 
There we have a Federal Academy of Public Administration in Austria, as on the national level, and there we designed a one-day training. Um, and due to the COVID crisis, it was postponed, but now we have a new date, which is the 10th of December. So there we, Annalisa and me, we will uh, made, may make a training for yeah, public officers uh, on a national, on the, on, the, yeah, on the federal level, more or less. And we will try to inform them how they could implement EMAs uh, within their organizations. And the last action was uh, concerning the environmental inspe inspections, uh, how we could use synergies between EMAs and environmental inspections. Yeah, and uh, one of the, I think, most important results of this project was that we uh, were drafting a letter. We, were, we have prepared a letter. Uh, also the whole project team prepared a letter and sent it out to the GRC regarding the integration of EMAs in the bud and breath conclusions, uh, because there now um, uh, environmental management uh, system uh, has to be implemented. So there is a new requirement in these bud and breath conclusions, but there's no link, there was no link to EMAs. And, but in the future, so the GRC uh, answered our letter that in the future there will be a reference to EMAS. And uh, this has been already implemented in the butt and breath uh, for waste incineration and food and beverages. Yeah, and also we also plan to do a training for environmental inspectors, but this was postponed, uh, postponed due to the COVID crisis. Yeah, this was it for my side, and thank you very much. I also want to thank the whole project team and also the project partners. And, and the, I think the collaboration was very good. And I'm really a bit sad that the project now has come to an end. Thank you very much. Thank you, Monica, and thank you to all speakers for sharing with us the first results of the project. I'm sure that these presentations will inspire other organizations, EMAS competent bodies and public administrations in Europe. And uh, the journey we have taken so far in this session lead us to the last um, speaker, uh, Ms. Federica Detri, the EMAS Policy Officer of DG of Envi for Environment, Sustainable Production, Products and Consumption of the European Commission. Welcome, Detri. Thank you, long title. Uh, um, yeah, thank you very much uh, for this introduction and the invitation to this event which was very interesting to me. Uh, what I heard uh, today will surely give me some new ideas and focus for my work to come. As you might know, I am a very new policy officer for the EMA scheme in the European Commission. I'm succeeding Marianne Müller, which you might know. And I just started the summer on this policy. So you can imagine I'm still getting acquainted with all the details of my files, the different projects and initiatives like yours. So this event was is, and still is a great opportunity for me to see what's done on regional level in, yeah, in all, with all the different partners that you have and to get to know the people behind it, also just virtual, unfortunately. unfortunately. And uh, today, and also in preparation of for this event, I learned yeah, about all the different actions implemented on regional level, and I saw a lot of good ideas and, and a lot of motivation you brought into these different actions to further enhance the EMA scheme. I, I really hope that these ideas and best practices will also spread to other regions and member states. And I know that you will make a presentation also on the enhanced project in the EMAS committee at the end of September and I think that's already a good occasion to spread with uh, these, uh, the ideas. And of course, I'm already well aware that there's not only the regional and national side to the implementation of the scheme, also the European Commission has an important role to play. And one important task and the topic I was asked to talk about today is the integration of EMAS in the different European policies. In this context, 
I have already been approached by several stakeholders and I ask you, please continue to do so. Approach me when you see potential for AMAS in the EU policies or other ways of improvement. And if you want to uh, share uh, the results of all your actions with me, I, I'm, I'm really happy to, to get all this information. There are so many initiatives going on on EU level um, in the many different DGs, many new policies or reviews of policy, policies that I, I alone cannot spot all the possibilities to enhance EMAS by myself. So it, it really needs to be a joint effort. As an example, with regard to EMAS and the circular economy, we received in July a letter from Ms. Mercier-Rios uh, pointing out the great potential of EMAS and her disappointment that EMAS is not explicitly mentioned in the new circular economy action plan. In our reply, we explain, and I will repeat it today, that the new circular economy action plan is, many, is mentioning many different actions which will then lead to measures to be implemented by the EU and the member states. But EMAS is not an action in that sense. Instead, it will be an important tool to implement some of the actions proposed in the Circular Economy Action Plan. Uh, one example that we were mentioning was an action to empower consumers to contribute to a circular economy. This will be done in the ELIA by giving them better information and product, uh, on products and also through an initiative to tackle misleading green claims. Companies that are making green claims will need to assess their impacts on the environment using standard, a standard methodology. And the aim is to find a way to make this information reliable and comparable to give market actors a chance to make the right choices. And with EMAS, of course, uh, most of the data required uh, for an organizational environmental footprint is already at hand and validated by an environmental verifier. So EMAS registered organizations would have a clear advantage to support their clean, green claims. So this was just one of several policies I'm focusing on at the moment to give EMAS more visibility and make it more attractive for participation. And as my director already pointed out in the beginning of this event, uh, he's, he, the commission, we all see the potential of EMAS and uh, you can be assured that we are continuously working on the further integration of EMAS in the EU policies. So I will also take the occasion to invite you to participate in the conference uh, celebrating 25 years of EMAS in Berlin uh, this 29th of September, which will also take place only virtual due to the COVID crisis. It's called, uh, the title is Between Economic Recovery and the European Green Deal, Pathways for Corporate Sustainability Management. So there will be many interesting panel discussions going on there. And in the same week, there will be also the EMAS committee, where, where me and different colleagues will talk about the state of play of the integration of EMAS into European policies as well. So it's really a pity that we that yeah we will not meet in person, that I will not have the chance to get to know the EMAS community in person this time due to the COVID restrictions. But I'm sure there will be many occasions in the future, and I'm really looking forward to it. Thank you very much. Thank you for your speech, and, and welcome to the EMAS family. <laughs> you will find it very active, and you can be sure that we will approach you whenever we spot an opportunity to include EMAS in the EU policies, because mm -hmm. it's a key aspect for us. So uh, I hope we will Work, we all work together within the, the EMAS community to achieve this, this necessary result. Okay, uh, now it's time for the debate. Uh, if you have any question, you can raise your hand. Uh, for those that are not familiar with this platform, you can do it by clicking the hand icon in the uh, black bar you see that appears on your screen. 
uh, I will check the participants display and I will give you the, the floor. And please, after your intervention, uh, lower your hand so that I can check the, the other uh, people that has uh, raised their hands. So I already see one uh, hand raised uh, from um, Pablo Chamorro. Please, Pablo. Hello. Good afternoon. Uh, OK, uh, I'm Pablo from Mecomundis. I'm a consultancy from Barcelona. And um, my question is for the European Commission representatives, I think it's. Will be 20, 2021 a new, uh, uh, the new year for update of EMA's regulation with budget or contact dedicated to promote and value the brand, EMA's, and taking into account all the, these conclusions and proposals of the enhanced project? It was, it was the one question. And uh, two proposals uh, to, to promote uh, the, the brand EMA's or facilitate uh, uh, EMAS registered companies uh, that uh, I put uh, then into the chat if you want to, to read more carefully. But the one is introducing a new web-based tools in the official EMAS site, allowing uh, little and small companies uh, to generate online uh, environmental statements and uh, allowing EMAS registered companies to introduce indicators in the same uh, uh, web-based uh, Emma's site, and also could be introduced carbon, fo carbon fo footprint and circular economy indicators as a targets to Emma's statements and as a core of principal commitments of the environmental performance of Emma's companies. Because I think that way general public and final consumers finally understand the difference between Emma's and uh, ISO 40001. So some about uh, new new change in regulations are some proposals. Thank you. Did you have a concrete question? I know so much information. Yes. Or you sent me some uh, all if, these documents. If it's, if it will be uh, new modifications of the MS uh, regulation in 20, 2021 uh, related with those uh, conclusions and proposals of enhanced project to promote the value and the brand of emas ah uh, i can not tell you yet please send me all your conclusions and then uh, uh, we have to discuss uh, what can what can be done if there of course if there are good policies possibilities to make the regulation better i'm all open for that so please let me know so far i i am not i was not aware of the enhanced conclusions yet they were not given to me and the, and the project is still undergoing no till the end of the year thank you uh <clears throat> Is there any other question from the audience? Um, I think I no. Sorry, I'm checking the, the display. I think there's, there's, there's no other question. There is one. Uh, um, I cannot see it. So if the person that has raised their hand, you can ask the question, please. Hello, yeah. Maria. Yeah. This is George from Luxembourg speaking. Ah, okay. Hi, George. 
please. I would just have a short remark, maybe, or observation. Uh, I would like to comment a little bit uh, the statement, uh, uh, Frederick, uh, on the action plan, the newest action plan on circular economy from the EC. Uh, I remember the action plan of 2015, where, of course, uh, several pillars have been mentioned, pillars like the EU eco label uh, regulation, but also the EMAS regulation, uh, which now in the new version of the action plan, let's say, is not maybe uh, any more uh, specifically mentioned, but I think Anyhow, it still uh, stays a pillar of circular economy. Let's say I want just to 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 tell you that I think that uh, the EU eco labels, the GPP, the EMAS regulations are still pillars of the circular e e economy, even if maybe the new action plan, which has been let's say uh, written in a certain different manner and, and where uh, the descriptions of the objectives of the action plan are different is a little bit different. Uh, that's that's just one observation from my side. Uh, the second one is, uh, I think, the um, the question which always raises uh, what what can uh, the EC do in different uh, EC regulations to to uh, let's say uh, improve the uptake of EMAS. I think especially also uh, on the in Rust, the Industrial Emissions Directive, which is basically a, a directive uh, linked to issuing permits uh, from enforcement authorities, we have only one article. This is Article 23 in, in this uh, Industrial em Emission Directive, uh, Article 23, which speaks about uh, um, environmental inspections and which gives the possibility, as you all know, to reduce to reduce uh, inspection. Um, in in such a directive, uh, the EMAS could play a big. Luxembourg is a very small country. We have we have close 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 links to the to our enforcement authorities, and I know there is somehow. A, a need, uh, a need, an, an urgent need also to, to explain what is EMAS to the enforcement authorities. And maybe through the directives and through guidelines and also instructions in directives, uh, the EMAS regulation could, uh, could again gain a little bit more weight, let's say, if the possibility if, uh, from the legal uh, point of view through the directive uh, is, is being given by the EC Commission. Okay, these are my comments. Thank you very much. Thank you, George. Uh, Federico, do you want to add something to George's comments? I can only say at the, for the moment that I will write all these comments down and I need to check them because, yeah, I, I need to get an overview of all the possibilities. Okay, thank you. And now I see we have also a question from Evelyn Pisalo from Estonia. Yes, uh, it's it's uh, connected to EMAS and and uh, GPP and something that we have discussed in uh, our previous meetings also uh, that both Austria and and uh, and especially Italy who who um, focused all their action plan on uh, on uh, GPP and and EMAS connection to ask how. Uh, or what kind of um, possibilities did you find to include EMAS in, in GPP as, as, as a criteria? Because we see in Estonia, we see uh, this problem that it's not really, uh, well, it is allowed, but it's still not allowed to, to give it a special, uh, special uh, reference. You know, you have to either, it's it's either EMAS, but it's also allowed. Uh, other other schemes should be allowed. So I don't know. This is question for either for Tiberio or, or for Monica. <laughs> or maybe both can comment. Tiberio. Uh, 
Sorry, Maria, I had some problems with the, can you resume the question? Because I don't hear you very clearly. Yes, Evelyn was asking you, uh, uh, how did you manage to include EMAS in, in GPP criteria? Because uh, in Estonia, it is still very complicated to do it. Uh, okay. They always have to mention also their standards. That, I mean, it's the never ending Problem. Yeah, 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 yeah. Thank, thank you, Evelyn, for the question. Yeah, actually, uh, in Italy, we are very strict rules in order to include EMAS because uh, being mandatory, uh, the use of green public procurement, we have some decrees that establish specific rules to use uh, product or process certification and so on. So the current version of the code of contracts, national code of contracts, where in some articles these rules are specified, said that uh, EMAS can be used in the selection of candidates as uh, a proof to demonstrate that the candidates have an environmental management system. So the public authorities say, okay, the winner of tender for cleaning services, for example, should have an environmental management in place. These uh, environmental management system in place can be demonstrated, for example, by EMAS ISO 4001 and so on. So surely they cannot be include uh, a clear reference uh, to, the, to the selection of candidates saying you have only to, to participate to this call if you have EMAS, because otherwise it's clear, clearly you influence the competition and so on and so on. So it's a proof to demonstrate to have the environmental management uh, an environmental management system in place. Not what is interesting, I, if I have uh, one minute to add an issue, what is interesting that uh, now in Italy we are assisting to a reverse approach in terms of uh, uh, compliant toward justice of magistrates. So if uh, till uh, some years ago there was a situation where, uh, okay, I public attender, uh, I include uh, EMAS uh, or ISO 4001 certification in the tender. Then the non-certified company say, oh, you cannot include this and this because I cannot participate and so on. And so go to the magistrate. Now is the reverse situation where we have already in the last two years some official complaints to our magistrate from registered or certified companies because it's mandatory according to the uh, law of Italy, of Italy to include in some cases the environmental certification. So when the certified companies don't see that uh, the public tender include the reference to environmental certification, they present uh, an opposition to the magistrate saying, please make uh, this uh, tender invalid because uh, they don't respect uh, the need to include the environmental certification in the tender. So it's a, it's a big issue and an, an interesting aspect for certified companies, I think. Thank you, Tiberio. Monica, do you want to add something? Monica or Annalise? Yes, we have included our national agency for public procurement also in the stakeholder workshop. And I think this was a good idea because now we have a direct co connection, a direct relation to this agency. And the agency said to us that it's maybe easier to include EMAS in the award criteria because in the technical specification, it can reduce the, um, the competition, of course, because in some cases there might be only one or two EMAS organizations. But if you say, okay, um, we can include EMAS in the award criteria, maybe it's easier uh, to include it there than in the technical specifications. So I think uh, we have to prove it case by case. And in some cases like uh, waste management, we have a lot of EMAS companies. We have over 30 EMAS companies which got, which got EMAS in place. And there it's very easy to include EMAS, but in other cases like, I don't know, furniture, um, office furniture, we, don't, we only have one uh, organization with EMAS in place or two. So I think it's, it's, it's sometimes it might be more difficult, but in, I think in the cleaning sector we have um, yeah we have now uh, the situation that EMAS really is an uh, is really a positive 
what criteria is also can be recognized. Um, and that's why we have a lot of e now cleaning uh, companies which got EMAs in place. So EMAs, um, as a companies with EMAs, uh, they get more points uh, in, this pro um, in this procurement procedure than, for example, companies with, uh, with only ISO 14001 in uh, management system in place. So there is a um, distinction between EMAS and ISO 14001. Also there's a difference. We, we made a difference. It's only a slight difference. I think it's only uh, one point or half point where, uh, that you get more with EMAS. But this is a really a difference yeah, for the companies. And uh, in the cleaning sector, we have got, I don't know, 15 companies, I think, in place now in the register. So this has lead, uh, this has led to more EMAS companies. Okay, thank you, Monica. And um, I'll check. I think there are no more questions uh, on the display. So if there are no more questions, um, I think that, uh, well, the project is coming to an end, uh, but uh, it's getting closer also to the most interesting phase. Uh, and that is how uh, it can have a, a wider impact in other uh, European regions. So um, I, that's why I invite all participants to contact the project partners and take the opportunity to learn more about, about their action plans, uh, their main obstacles, the, the lessons learned across these four years of intense work. And uh, I hope that the session has been beneficial for everyone and that all have um, that we all have new inputs, ideas and knowledge that will help us promote EMAS in our regions and thus help um, promoting uh, uh, promoting EMAS and make our organizations more efficient and be part of, of the circular economy. Um, I think that's it uh, for today. Um, have a nice afternoon and uh, do not hesitate to contact the, um, the partners and the enhanced project uh, leader if you need further information. Goodbye. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye. And thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. It was very interesting. Thank you, the organizer. Thank you, Bye. See you. Bye. 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 From Fabio. Bye bye, bye, bye Fabio. Bye Fabio.